세계 한국학 연구의 메카, 하와이 대학 한국학 연구소에 가는 길은 언제나 즐겁습니다. 건물에서부터 한국적인 정취가 물씬 느껴져서일까요? 바라만 봐도 좋은 이곳에서 오늘은 특별한 손님을 만나기로 했습니다. 아름다운 선율로 소통하는 음악가 마이클 림은 조금 남다른 증조 할아버지 할머니를 가졌습니다. 26세 나이에 하와이로 이민와 이른에 세상을 떠날 때까지 고국의 독립운동과 하와이 한인 이민자들의 권익신장에 모든 것을 바친 안원규 그리고 남편 못지않은 용기와 기계가 넘쳤던 여성 리더 안정송 하와이 이민사는 물론이고 대한민국의 독립운동 역사에 큰 발자취를 남기고 떠난 독립운동가 부부의 4대 손 마이클 림을 함께 만나보시죠. My name is Michael Lim. I play violin with the Hawaii Symphony Orchestra. I also teach music uh, in middle school and high school. And my passion in life is music. It's everything that I do with my job and everything that I do with my life. I'm kind of an introverted person, so music is really a way that I can express a lot of the things I feel inside. I don't, I don't like to talk so much. Um, I'm actually very quiet. Um, but music is a way that I can get those emotions out and make something beautiful and say things that I don't necessarily have to say actual words, but I can convey uh, emotions and feelings and hopefully um, make other people feel emotions as well. That's great. I guess that's how a lot of artists feel like they express their way of thinking through their work. Yes. That's great. When did you start um, violin? Uh, I started violin at age seven. Uh, I had already been playing piano since age of four. At the time I started violin, I, I was much better at the piano because I'd been playing for three years. Um, but as I continued to play the violin, I found that I could express myself better on the violin. Not just violin, but you play viola, you rearrange music, and you compose music as well. How did you get into those composing and rearranging part? I think my, my piano background really had a big influence on the composing and the arranging because with the piano I, I really understand the, the chords and how music is laid out and um, my dad was always into just like improvising on the piano and so I kind of learned that from him as well and composing I've always I've always been kind of tinkering with things writing songs here and there um, I actually wrote our graduation song for um, my high school graduation and ever since then I've been writing more and more um, music on my own. During kind of the pandemic era um, and a little bit before I, I was trying to write a, a full musical so um, based on A Midsummer's Night's Dream by um, Shakespeare. And so I took the text and kind of rearranged it into modern English and wrote the lyrics out um, in song format and I composed um, I don't know, 20, 25-ish musical numbers that would transform it into a, a musical setting. Oh, so. that's awesome. How far is it now? Um, I have all the, the songs done. Um, it just needs to, uh, I would need to arrange the music so that uh, a pit band could play it um, for a performance. And also, um, we need to like modify the text a little bit so that it could be performed on stage, but mm -hmm. it's, getting closer. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. I look forward to seeing it. Back in 2003, we were celebrating the Korean immigrant histories in Hawaii, and the Centennial Committee was selecting 27 notable Koreans, and three of them, three of the entire um, Korean communities from the first generations of Korean were from your family. You're aware of it? Yes. Um... Can you introduce who they were? So um, these are both on my father's side. Um, my father's mother, um, her parents were Wan Kyu An and uh, Chung Son An. And uh, Wan Kyu An was, um, he came to Hawaii as, to work on the plantations and he became a successful businessman. And he did a lot of work to help uh, found the Korean National Association. Yes, and um, did a lot of work towards um, Korean independence during the wartime and helped a lot of the Korean immigrants that came to Hawaii. 
and his wife, um, Yi Chong Song, um, who was later An Chong Song, um, she also did a lot of work uh, for the Korean community uh, in Hawaii, um, both as a teacher and um, just, yeah, she, she helped out the Korean community a lot. And then there is uh, Im Chun Ho, who is my father's grandfather on his father's side. Um, and he was a, he originally came to work in the plantations, but he was um, a pastor and he was really um, instrumental in helping the Korean communities, especially um, fighting for those people who worked on the plantations and getting them, you know, fair working conditions and um, helping them to succeed um, in, their, in their work in Hawaii. That's awesome. That's, it is very special to have three people all in your family tree that were helping Korean community here so much and then also um, supporting the Korean independent movement in Korea. How did it affect you personally? Did it affect you personally in your life to have um, ancestors like that? Yeah, well, um, my grandparents didn't really talk about it that much. Um, so I guess the first time I really learned about Mr. An, uh, I was in around middle school age, I think, and um, we had a ceremony here at the Center for Korean Studies at the University of Hawaii. And a lot of my family members came to honor him. And he passed away in 1947, so a lot of my family had never met him, but it was just amazing to see um, all the work that he had done during his lifetime. And I think a lot of my family didn't really know about it. And so as a young boy, it was, it was inspiring for me to hear about all the things he did to help people, to help the immigrants, to help his country back home. And I, I thought that I would also like to, you know, help people in some way, maybe not to that grand of a scale. I think he did so much work, um, but I also wanted to help others in the way that he helped. My aunt, my great aunt uh, Lizzie, um, she wrote a book. Um, she was uh, Mr. An's daughter, his youngest daughter. And so she wrote a book about her childhood in Hawaii. And so in that book, she accounts a lot of stories about how Mr. An helped certain people throughout his life. And I guess one of those was he, he gave somebody $50 um, to take a ticket to California and start his life. And that person was so grateful. He, you know, became a more mature man in California, returned to the islands and was coaching a team with the YMCA. And um, he was so happy that Mr. An donated um, uniforms to the team because he said, you know, they, they had such a sense of pride with the team to have those new uniforms uh, made just for them. And it just boosted the morale of the team. What about you being a musician? Was there any influence by your um, great grandparents or anybody in your family member? Well, um, his, uh, Mr. An's wife, Chung Song, um, when she first negotiated her terms of marriage to come down, she, she wanted a teaching position and she wanted a piano. So, piano. yeah, she was obviously a well-educated musician herself. Mm -hmm. And um, in, in the book that I read, um, she would give her daughters um, music lessons every day. They would have to practice the piano. And so she would teach them music. And um, my grandmother's oldest sister, the oldest daughter, um, her name was Florence. Um, she um, apparently had a really beautiful voice. And I think she was the first, um, at least Asian American woman to go to Juilliard um, to study voice and operatic singing. Um, Ever. So it, that, when I heard that, that was so inspiring for me as a musician to think that, you know, my, my family has made history in one of the, you know, top music schools in, sure. in the country. <laughs> um, I wanted to share this, uh, what Florence Ahn wrote about her education. My parents both said to us, you must study hard, finish college, and go back to Korea to teach and help Korea. That is what we all went to school for, I guess. Did you know that uh, she was feeling that way? Um, no, I, I didn't know that before, but I guess it, it goes along with what they always believed in was, you know, to get a good education and study hard and become educated yourself and then to go and help others, to help Korea. And 
That's amazing. Yeah, not just thinking about their um, own child's future, but also we're thinking about Korea, even though they were living so far away. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. And um, descendants of Mr. and Mrs. An went into various fields of um, society, not just the music, as you know. Karen An was a judge of Hawaii, state of Hawaii. And uh, the, the person who wrote that book that you um, let me borrow, what was her name? Uh, her name is Elizabeth, uh, Elizabeth uh, on Tupin. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and she was the first um, Asian American to be a dean of the Tufts, so. Tufts University in yes, Boston. Yes, I think so, yes. Yeah, it's, I guess it, it seems like uh, education was a really big part um, in their family. Oh yes, I, I think it was always emphasized um, both in their generation and then um, they pass it on to their children as well. Yeah, and as a father of 20 months or little girl, um, what do you wish for her? Um, well, I hope that, you know, she becomes a good moral citizen of the world. Um, I also hope that she's happy um, in whatever she chooses to do with her life and also the people that she meets in her life. I think um, Mr. An really found that true wealth lies in helping others and to share that wealth with other people. And it kind of reminds me of a song that we used to sing in elementary school. Uh, Love is something, if you give it away, you end up having more. And it goes on to say like, uh, it's just like a magic penny. If you hold it tight, you don't have any, but if you lend it, spend it, you have so many that they roll all over the floor. And I think Mr. An really embodied this throughout his entire life. He had. He was a very successful businessman, very wealthy. Um, and I guess he could have used that wealth just for his own personal gain and for his own family. Um, but he was committed to sharing that with the Korean community in Hawaii and with his country back home, donating you know, large portions of his plantation and just getting people um, good starts to their careers and helping them get off the plantations into their own businesses. And I hope Rena, you know, will embody some of that philosophy in her life to not only be successful yourself, but to help others. And maybe if we could all be a little bit more like Mr. An, the world would be a much better place. We have a special guest today. Can you please introduce her? Yes, uh, this is my wife, uh, Nam Yoo Sun. Uh, she's born and raised in Seoul, Korea, and we met when we were both studying violin at Indiana University. Um, she's a doctor of music, uh, which she received from Eastman School of Music, and now she plays in the Hawaii Symphony Orchestra as a violinist and also teaches violin lessons. Oh, Uh, <laughs> so I did an arrangement of uh, a violin and viola duet of Go Hyang Ye Bom. I hope to dedicate this piece to not only my great grandparents, but to all the Korean immigrants who came and worked so hard um, so that we could have the lives that we have here today in Hawaii. <laughs> 